Hello YouTube, my name is Paul, hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to another Amiga Power Top 100 video. Um, yeah, from this particular magazine. 100 games that Amiga Power staff have deemed to be the best games ever released on the mighty Amiga. Now, this particular issue came out in August 1996, which was the second to last issue Amiga Power ever released. I'm pretty sure Amiga Power also had readers top 100s. So it may be something for another time, but for now we're focused on this. So what I'd like to do, as per usual, is just go through 10 games at a time. The difference being in this particular video is I want to discuss the games very briefly, no more than a minute, 90 seconds. Are they worthy of being in this particular list or not? Obviously you guys can get involved in the comments below. But going through the, this particular list, there's some seriously glaring omissions. Some games that I played back in the day that just don't make this list. Uh, games that I spent thousands of hours playing. Um... Also, publishing houses. I mean, there's a nice spread of them here. But there's one particular publishing house. Amiga Power weren't that particularly keen on, were they? So there's some of their games, which were really good, don't appear on this list. Which is a shame, really. But what would be really helpful for me in future videos, um, if you guys, if you can, leave your top Amiga computer games of all time also in the comments below. Because it'd be great to have a definitive list of games that you guys like so I can make a video in the future, including my own favourites. And games that should really be in the final Amiga Power Top 100. So yeah, so without further ado, let's crack on with the video. <laughs> Flick through the pages of a book. What was that from? But yeah. So yeah, basically what Amiga Power did is they left a little caption for each game, which was usually quite funny. Very descriptive, really, as well. So it might be worth you having to guess what the game is, if you don't already know. So first up is a game which is pleasing for player platform dash up buildings, followed by a tremendous free fall battles down them. A party favourite. New entry by Rasputin. Base jumpers. Again. Never played this game, never had it back in the day. Um, didn't give it a go, really, until making this particular video. And a pretty, a pretty good descriptive um, summary, really. You literally are going up the upper building, avoiding the baddies, picking up objects to help you on the way, and avoiding obstacles as well. It's pretty frantic. I can't imagine it's a particularly great game, one player, but two players, I can see the appeal to it. Now, Amiga Power tended to have a lot of games like that in their listings, where a lot of the reviewers probably got around together, played the games, and absolutely had a great time. Probably pissed as well. But for me, there's games as a single player, that I would prefer to see in this listing, which would probably, possibly, make that one drop out. But yeah, good game, I've got to say. Highly recommended. Definitely play it if you've got more than one of you. Now next up is a title that I remember playing back in the day, back in 1982. In fact, it was the first game I ever played on the Atari. Now this is a version of it which was um, in the public domain. Uh, multiplayer Maisie Wandering with Tanks, of course, and Big Guns. Bounce the shots off the wall to disable your friends in real... In real life too? In real life too, what does that mean? But anyway, so yeah, so a game which came out, I think, on Amiga Power Cover Disc 48. I will leave a, a little description below as to where you can find that particular game. But it's good. Again, another game that if you had more than one of you, it's absolutely fantastic, especially if you're a bit pissed. Graphically, it's as basic as the original tank game back in the day. And for me, being a bit of a snob when it comes to the old presentation and graphics, probably wouldn't make it. But I know many of you kind of purists 
would probably like this game. I probably would put it in this top 100, to be honest. But for me personally, I'd rather go back and play the game on its native Atari. So yeah, that's Tank with 3Ks. Right, next game. A bit of a strange one, this one. This one is um, apparently by Anko. Who says the point-and-click adventure has had its day? Assassination and cross-dressing prove that this oldie's still a goldie. Now, apparently, this isn't even a flipping game. It was an article that was published, or a letter that might have been published in Amiga Power a couple of issues before. So they are, the title's called Kill the Prez. So yeah, a bit of a, an Amiga Power gimmick. So yeah, a lot of us would have been scratching our heads to think, wow, what is that game? Kill the Prez sounds pretty cool. But yeah, it never got released, and it's just an Amiga Power gimmick. <laughs> Let's keep with the theme of this particular listing so far. Another game I never owned back in the day, but a game that actually, when I played it, I actually liked it. It's a puzzler um, by Psygnosis. Headache inducing arcade puzzler featuring a head and later a torso, spinning round coin filled levels. Quite a bit like the bonus levels from Sonic. Strangely enough, I thought it was taken from Sonic level before reading this caption. But yeah, that game is none other than Bob's Bad Day. I never played it before, but as a puzzler, it's bloody good fun. I think it's just a standard ECS version. I don't think there's any upgrades to this one. It's not an AJ version or anything like that. But yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by this game. Quite a cute little introduction. But as a puzzle game, yeah, I would say so. Would it make this list? I don't know. Certainly one I'd park up to have a think about, but yeah, not a bad game. Give it a go. Of course, it's bloody good fun and quite addictive as well, which is what you want from games, really, isn't it? Bob's Bad Day, Psygnosis. Next up is a classic. One of my favourite platformers. From this particular platformer, it gets hard very, very quickly. But I remember buying this back in 1989 on my ST and I thought it was absolutely amazing. Blew anything 8-bit wise out of the water. Uh, amiable and twee platformer. Amiable and twee. Capable of traumatising small children through its graphic depiction of the central character. A fluffy kiwi, which kind of gives it away, really. One of my favourite games. Well, it's certainly one of my most nostalgic games of all time, New Zealand Story. Uh, again, there are better platformers on the Amiga. This would probably, most definitely, certainly be in my Amiga Power Top 100, because I love this game, even though it goes from easy to difficult extremely quickly. 
Um, I love it. Addictive. Never, never completed it. Um, but yeah, New Zealand story. What a game. Would that make your top 100? Right, next up is a game by Vivid Image, a game I've never played before. Um, I played the original one for a bit and it looked and played really well. So, the caption, my sword, cries a tremendously well animated hero of this platform beat him up and so does his near identical partner. Now I didn't know this was a two player game. As they hack, blast, leap and jetpack their way through the adventuresome lair of evil. Now, the guy who, who coded this, or one of the guys who coded this, is the legendary Raphael Keko, Checo, I can never pronounce his surname. But again, this it looks and plays really well. Um, lovely graphics. I, I didn't play it for more than about 15, 20 minutes. Certainly a game I wouldn't rule out of being an Amiga Power Top 100. But yeah, hack and slash, uh, pick up lots of objects to kind of move on really and progress. Lots of lovely, huge, mung, humongous baddies to kill. And that sort of is. Brilliant, but I did not know this was a two-player game. See what I mean about these Amiga Power games, multiplayer? So yeah, that would add a, an amazing dimension to an already brilliant game. So yeah, certainly part this one up. I wouldn't. I need to play it a bit more to consider it for the, uh, my top 100 games of all time, but certainly a game that's worth giving a go. Absolutely fantastic from what I've seen of it so far, but it is a little bit hard, I've got to say. <laughs> Ah, so next up is a game very similar to the New Zealand story, um, whereby I had it back on the ST years ago. I think I picked this one up in about 1990s. I think the ST one was delayed by quite a bit. Uh, and published by Ocean Software. Possibly the only truly great jet sim on the Amiga. Packing the targets and flying enemies into such a small acreage that you're bound to get into some action almost straight away. Whoopee. Now, funny enough, when I did the video footage for this, I never came into contact with any enemies, which is really strange, because the level I did, I think the whole idea of it is where you had to literally scramble from the airfield before you got shot. I didn't see a single plane. F-29 Retaliator, certainly for me, would be in my Amiga Power Top 100. Um, it is probably not necessarily the best flight simulator on the Amiga, or indeed the ST, but certainly one that is great fun. You don't need to kind of read up on humongous manuals. You do need to read a little bit. But it's more arcadey in feel than it is simulatory, like, say, um, Falcon, which, again, a great game. 
but for me Falcon was a little bit more intense in terms of the of what you had to pick up really before you can play it but yeah cracking game certainly one I would have in the top 100 because it's quite, quite a playable game Electronic Arts released the next one. Um, this one is with its incredibly fast action and its undeniably enjoyable multiplayer mode. This game's back in fashion. Now, this game appeared in the very first video I did um, about three years ago. One of the first series of videos I actually completed. That game is Projectile. Um, a good sports game. I've got to say, yet again though, multiplayer. Um, on your own though, it's good fun, but I can see how this game would excel with a friend. Again, it's something which um, resembles air hockey, I think. I think it's air hockey. You have to just bat the ball around the place. Taking it through tunnels, avoiding your opponents and scoring the goals. Now, I've not played it for long. It wouldn't be a game that would make my personal top 100. But I can see the appeal. Now, yeah, certainly one I wouldn't park. I, I know it wouldn't, it wouldn't be in the top 100 for me. So, so if I've got two games that would, one game that wouldn't, three games that... Possibly, you never know, possibly, they might make it. game I'm familiar with. Now this I had on the Amiga 1200 back in the day. I've now got it on the CD32. The A500 version of this bloody some platform platformer gets in because of the changes we insisted on that improved on the original 1200 version. Occasionally people listen to AP and the whole world profits when they do. Except for Team 17 of course. Now that game is Bobble and Squeak. Um, I fought this game to be honest with you it's quite a bland platformer. Nice graphics, um, quite a desirable title on the Sega Mega Drive. But for me personally, it's one of those annoying games. You've got to go and get your dog. He's got to follow you. You use that dog to do certain things to help you progress within the level. But he gets on your flipping nerves. So yeah, the game itself has got some gra gorgeous graphics. I remember the shoot em up level. Very slow paced shoot em up, just right up my street really. But again, for me, would this make the top 100? No, it wouldn't. Um, to be honest though, I've never played the 500 version, but I can't imagine what they would have done dramatically different uh, to the 1200 one. If you guys know, please leave a comment below. But yeah, that's Bubble and Squeak. Nice game to have, but not for me, unfortunately.
one from this first batch of 10 a classic a game that has spanned the generations in fact i think there's still a variant of this game today despite numerous attempts to make it bigger bolder and better which is the version i prefer to be honest the granddad seminal space trading game is still the best despite being older than all of us put together he's not wrong that should have given it away really elite personally i never played it um, never got into it, but I absolutely loved Frontier. That's a bit of a clue as to where this would be on my Amiga Power Top 100. Or my own personal Top 100. But yeah, I can see why people love it. I think it's one of those games you probably had to be there at the time to experience it and to love it. Uh, I think it came out originally back in, what, 85 on the BBC Micro? It's been released on pretty much every home computer back in the day. I love Frontier. Never really played uh, Final Encounters. Uh, I do have Elite Dangerous, but I've never played it. But yeah, certainly being most people's top 100 for definite, I would probably prefer to put its younger sibling in its place, to be honest. So that one again will be out, but replaced by a game, well, it's sequel, really. That's it. Hope you enjoyed this set of 10 videos. Please leave your comments below. Um, I'll see you again for the next batch of 10. So thank you for watching. Take care and bye for now.